Hi! I'm sharing uh, some winter themed books. Um, these are all from our bookshelf. I pulled them out right after Christmas as soon as our holiday books went away. Out came the winter themed books. These are more snow, less holiday. Um, and they're perfect for January. So we've kind of been keeping these nearby, working our way through them. I've actually talked about these before in a previous winter video, because uh, I don't think that I've added anything this last year, but they are good enough to share more than once. So let me show you what we've been reading. This book, which is just so sweet, Little Penguins Lost. Um, we're also going with kind of the Arctic animals, North Pole, South Pole, penguins theme in this case. And this is a Scholastic book by Tracy corduroy and illustrated by gavin scott and it's all about this very sweet penguin who loses his favorite little stuffy and he can't find it and so his um friends help him locate it but the fear is that it has been taken by the big scary walrus it's a cute little story scholastic always puts out great books um, and i like this one short form really cute especially my daughter has um a lovey that she just can't get enough of and so it's kind of fun for that. My skating, spoiler alert, if you follow me on Instagram at Kayla underscore Rochelle underscore photography, um, I talk a lot over there about um, kind of our homeschooling journey and some of the books we've been reading along the way. And on Fridays, I do a themed basket. We don't do school on Friday. We do like a, some activities that all under, fall under a certain theme. Last week was penguins. And this week is going to be ice skating. And this is the book we're going to read along with it. It's called Mice Skating. It's a cute little book. It's written by Annie Sylvester and illustrated by Tegan White. And it's just a cute little story about a little mouse who happens to love winter and want all of his friends um, and family members want to stay home where it's warm and hibernate. He just can't. He, he is just having too much fun out in the winter weather. It's just a cute little story. And I love a good illustration. How cute is that? This is a sweet little book. It's very fun. We love that one. Big Little Snowflakes, Big Adventure. This is another one of those classic books. Particularly when I started building our bookshelves with my kid. My kid. My kids were younger. Um, and I knew we kind of wanted some books that fit into certain themes. This classic is a great place to start because you can get these really small books um, for just a couple dollars sometimes. A lot of these I also find at thrift stores, um, consignment stores. I love book hunting there and can always find a couple really good ones. So this is another kind of sweet story um, all about the little snowflake. And as he's kind of falling, he's kind of experiencing winter and, you know, kind of learning the ropes. Are you all right? Patty asked the little snowflake. I'm fine, he answered. Then the little snowflake looked around and saw Susie Snowflake and Frozen Freddy. Hey, it's my old friends. Patty was happy to meet Susie and Freddy. Just a cute little story. So this one's written by Stephen Metzger and illustrated by Monica Wellington. So this is a cute one. Same thing. This is the kind of book we love just having out for breakfast time so you can kind of read it, flip through it. Um, if you're sick of me talking about how much I love Virginia Lee Burton, too bad. I can't get enough. Katie and the Big Snow. This is one of the first books actually that oh, my daughter had her been maybe two, maybe just over. And uh, we were regulars at the library. I got to saw the library and I just said, oh, I can't get enough of this book. And I wouldn't stop telling people at the playground. I read the greatest book. It's called Katie and the Big Snow. And I felt like I was talking about this particular book nonstop. And that's what made me go out. There's got to be a Facebook group in which I could share some cool books when we read them uh, and couldn't find one and started this one, Little One's Literary Review. Katie and the Big Snow by Virginia Lee Burton is all about a girl snowplow. And um, she knows she doesn't have a lot to do when it's not snowing. But when the snow does come and it's a great big snowstorm and it covers the whole town, Katie, the city of Galapagos was covered with a thick, blanket of snow. Slowly and steadily, Katie started to plow out the city. Help, called the chief of police. Help us to get out to protect the city. Sure, said Katie. Follow me. I love the classic kind of traditional look of Virginia Lee Burton's books. I love that this book is kind of about helping our neighbors and taking care of each other. And I love, love, love that the role of a snow plow is played by a female character. You don't see that a lot. Construction vehicles have somehow been assigned male genders. And so where she would fit into that kind of bigger vehicle, 
um, she's a girl and I liked that. And I liked that subtle message for my girls. Kind of like, we could do anything. Why can't Snow Paw be a girl? So we love that one. Owl Moon, this one's more, one of the more recent ones that we've added to our collection. Um, this is a Caldecott Metal winner and I definitely can see why. This is by Jane Yolen and illustrated by John Schoenher. I apologize if that's not how you say that. This beautiful, beautiful, beautiful book is all about um, when the moon is just right, um, dad takes his child out hunting for owls. If you go owling, you have to be quiet and make your own heat. This is the kind of book that you kind of sit, you sit with after you read it. Um, you snuggle together on the couch and you read it. And you just kind of can sit and think about it. And we've really enjoyed this. The illustrations have come up a few times in some of our art lessons. Um, it's just a gorgeous book. It's really sweet. And actually, it's my daughter loves playing owl hunting now because of it. And it's just a really great kind of story about being out in nature. And I'm always a sucker for, for encouraging my kids to want to be outside more often. There was an old lady who swallowed some snow. Are you familiar with these? This is like the series to end all series. Um, another scholastic one, this one by Lucille Calandra, illustrated by Jared Lee. There's an old, old, old kid song called There Was an Old Lady Who Swallowed a Fly, Perhaps She'll Die. And from there, they have turned this into a whole series. We have the one, the lady who swallowed leaves, um, the snow, you can find turkey, you can find one for basically any theme under the sun. You're going to find one of these versions. Um, in this case, each, it's written in the rhyming po prose to match the song. And um, she swallows a whole series of things, in this case, a top hat, and then coal, and then a pipe. And by the end of the book, you will find out uh, what she's doing with all these things. Um, I think you can probably guess what you would do with a top hat and a pipe and some coal. And what's going to form in her belly once she has it all swallowed. It's just like a fun little, fun little snowy winter one. This book, Snow, this is another Caldecott honor book by Yuri Schulwitz. Schulwitz. And this one is all about um, the kid who's so excited because he sees a snowflake. And everyone kind of poo poos and like, it's just a snowflake. It's only a snowflake. Big illustrations, few words. I like stories that kind of cause us to talk about the illustrations more than being told what's happening. We like to see what's happening. That's great for kind of encouraging imagination, encouraging storytelling. I do a lot of filling in the blanks that way, which I, which I really love. And in this case, that one little snowflake turns into a lot of snowflakes. This is a pretty book. This is a really nice one. Same thing. Um, years ago, family in Florida asked when we were living in New York, what's snow like? And I took a second and I said, it's quiet. And they said, wait, we thought you were going to say cold. And I was like, I know you did. But actually, if you live someplace where it's snowy, when it's snowing, it's just quiet. The whole world just feels quiet. Um, that's something I miss about the snow now that we live in the south. This book kind of felt that way to me. It just felt quiet. And I love that. It's so sweet. I'm going to finish with oh, my most favorite book. I love this book so much. I convinced the librarians at my local Charleston Public Library to request it under my name so that they could add it to their shelves because they had never heard of it. They didn't have it. It wasn't in their system. And I couldn't even believe it because I love this book so much. This one I had gotten out of the library when we lived in New York City, uh, read it to my daughter, cried immediately because I thought it was so sweet, and then ordered it that night on Amazon. The Most Perfect Snowman by Chris Britt. I've talked about this book uh, every chance I get. I just love this one. This is about a snowman who doesn't have... He's lost all of his parts and pieces, essentially. He has no hat, no gloves, no carrot nose. And all of the other snowmen in the forest do, and he feels like he is somehow less than because he doesn't have all of those things. And a couple, some kids come along and they give him all of their items. And all of a sudden he's the proud owner of a hat and he's the proud owner of a nose and gloves. And he's a real snowman again. Uh, and then he learns after meeting a little bunny in the snow that the true way to be a perfect snowman has nothing to do with what you're wearing and everything to do with what's in your heart. <laughs> the best little story, the best little story. Okay, I have like, so many winter books. You would think we enjoyed a winter here. And we don't, but we enjoy our winter books. So many favorites, so many good ones. We're having so much fun reading these. I hope you're reading some of these too. And if not, please tell us what are you reading? What winter books 
Can you not get enough of? What ones are kind of hanging on your shelves right now? What ones are keeping you warm as you're snuggling close this winter? Happy winter book reading.